We've all known for some time that Dyson has been working on an electric car and we've all known for some time since as far back as October 2019 in fact that Dyson had to kill off this electric car. But we've only very recently had a look at the thing. James Dyson, Britain's wealthiest man, very recently gave an interview to the Sunday Times where he revealed a few details about the car, codenamed N526, and gave us some small insight into his thought processes in why ultimately this car had to be killed off before it was released in 2020. First of all, what is it? Well, the N526 was an all-electric family SUV with a massive 600-mile driving range and decent performance. It was powered by two 200 kilowatt electric motors that gave it a 0 to 62 time of 4.8 seconds and a top speed of 125 miles an hour. It also looked really cool with some interesting touches, including storage bins that resembled pull-out filing cabinets and a dashboard with a holographic style instrument display. But Dyson ultimately had to pull out of the project because he realized that it simply wasn't commercially viable. He found out that the cost of the batteries, the battery management system, the cooling, the electronics, all added up to something that was much, much more expensive than building a normal internal combustion engine car. In all, he sunk half a billion pounds of his own money into the project before realizing that in order to break even, he would have to sell each one for 150,000 pounds. And I don't know about you guys, but who on earth is buying a car named after a vacuum cleaner for Lamborghini money? James Dyson is a brilliant man. I own several of his products in my house right now. And he's a guy who's changed entire industries. Every time you walk into a public toilet and dry your hands, you're using the fruit of his genius. If anyone can make an electric car work, it's him, surely. So what was it that went wrong? And what could he have done differently to secure the future of his electric car? There have been some reports, and you can take these with a pinch of salt, seeing as we're not hearing it directly from the horse's mouth, that claim James Dyson was maybe a little bit too emotionally attached to the project to see just how difficult it might be to pull off. Back in 1993, after he'd invented his vacuum cleaner and his hand dryer, he actually tried to enter the automotive industry with a special vehicle exhaust that could trap up to 94% of emissions. He tried to actually sell this to car manufacturers, but they were having none of it. None of them really cared about making their cars greener at the time. They were more concerned about being profitable. So the environmental side was kind of being swept under the rug. And he was obviously very upset by this. In his words, clean diesel was an oxymoron. And actually he might have been right because fast forward to 2020, diesel is very much being demonized right now. He also said that car manufacturers were circumventing and duping air regulators shots fired and he shared his obvious frustration with the fact that cities were dying under the weight of cars and buses and lorries spewing out toxic fumes and he thought that he could do something about it and he also saw this as a major opportunity to combine all of Dyson's technologies into one product. Forget cleaning exhaust with a filter, he wanted to get rid of exhausts completely. He saw how short-sighted the industry was and he saw this as an obligation to help reduce the number of people dying from emissions-related illnesses. He also wanted to show the car industry just how wrong they were to be ignoring these problems. So did the initial rejection and the subsequent laser-like focus on developing a solution ultimately caused him to underestimate just how difficult a job it would be to go against the big boys. The second thing that did for Dyson was perhaps underestimating the amount of money that he would have to invest in building a successful electric car in 2020. He invested half a billion pounds of his own money into the project, but that's absolutely nothing compared to the 50 billion pounds plus that Volkswagen are investing in their electric project. And even Volkswagen realized that 50 billion isn't enough. So they've partnered with Ford. They're actually sharing costs with their arch rivals because they realize exactly how much money it takes to produce something that can compete in today's world. All of these big car companies have the money, the resources, and the talent to go it alone. But even they realized that trying to do that by themselves would be massively risky. Dyson was always gonna be facing an uphill struggle in trying to do it by himself. The third problem I see with this project is that the product, the car itself, was just massively ambitious, maybe too ambitious. It's a 2.6 ton, seven seater family SUV. It weighs 200 kilograms more than a Tesla Model X. It weighs 350 kilograms more than a Mustang Mach-E. And Dyson wanted to give it a 600 mile driving range, double the range of a Model X. 
And let's not forget the Model X cost £90,000. How did he ever intend to achieve this range? Was the plan to install the car with double the capacity of batteries and hope that people would pay twice as much money for it? Or was he banking on a different battery technology, perhaps solid state batteries that ultimately never materialized or never materialized within the price range that he was hoping for? Either way, it was massively ambitious. Dyson loves to make a statement, that's his way. He always wants to make the best products available on the market. That's why he's done what he's done with vacuum cleaners. That's why his hand dryers are the most violent. That's why his hair curlers are the most extravagant. Of course he wanted to make a 600 mile seven seater electric car. But where was the use case for this? Who wants to drive with their family from the UK to Munich, Germany on an 11 hour, 600 mile long road trip? There's no, there's no use case for it. It almost doesn't make any sense. Of course, people in their heads would want a car that could do all this, but do they wanna pay for it? The final nail in the coffin for this project, arguably, is that there's a supply and demand issue with electric cars right now. It's massively difficult for a car maker to source the batteries that they need. That's why Tesla has partnered with Panasonic to get the cells that they need to create their battery packs. That's why BMW hooked up with contemporary Amperex technology company and Samsung SDI. That Samsung deal alone is worth 2.9 billion pounds, more than the entire budget of Dyson's electric car. The established players have done the groundwork and have forged the relationships that they need to source the batteries for their products. Unless Dyson had a master plan that we're not aware of, it would have been surely very difficult for a newcomer to walk into a battery cell provider, ask for a handful of cells, and be able to negotiate those cells at a low enough rate that would allow him to build a car that could compete with the bigger players. Of course, we don't know the real reasons behind this car's failure, was it the business decisions? Was it the fact that it was just too expensive a proposition? Was it just too hard to get into the industry? We'll never know. Maybe Dyson will tell us one day, but if anything, all this confirms is that it's incredibly tough for anyone to build an electric car in today's climate and make it a success. If it was easy, then the established players would have knocked Tesla off their pedestal a long time ago. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Would you have bought a Dyson electric car? Would you like to see the project come back one day maybe? Let me know as always, and also don't forget to hit like, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon, and we'll see you again for the next one. Peace.